Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to make a spectate system. So the way this is going to work, we have a button down here at the bottom. This is going to bring up a list of players other than yourself that are in the game. So right now I'm player two, so it's going to show player one right here. If you click on the player's name, then you go into spectate mode. And then if I move around player one, you can see it on both screens here. So this is player two watching player one. And I can do the same thing for the other player, so I can close out of this. And let's go under player one, and we can watch player two. Okay, and you can see as I move player two on this screen, player one is viewing the movements over here. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is basically how it's going to look, but you're welcome to customize this to look however you want to. The first thing we're going to do is add a screen GUI. So over here on starter GUI, you're going to click on the plus sign and then add a screen GUI. The first thing we're going to add inside the screen GUI is an image button, and that's going to be this one right down here. So to do that, you can just click on the plus sign and then click on image button. Go ahead and move this to wherever you want to on the screen. To get the image for this button, what I did is went under the image section in the toolbox. You can search for something like spectate. And then I found this image right here that I wanted to use. So if I want to make this image go inside the image button, all you have to do is right click on the image, select the last option right here. And then after you do that, you're going to find the image button in the Explorer menu. Once you have the image button selected, you're going to scroll down in the properties until you see the image section. And then for the image property, you're going to right click and then paste. What that's going to do, it's going to take what you copied from the toolbox and insert it on top of the image button. So after you press enter, it should show up on the image button just like that. And if you don't like this image, that's okay. You can select whichever one you want to. The next thing we're going to add is this button right down here. So this is going to be a text button. So clicking on screen GUI, you're going to click on the plus sign and then text button, which is this one right here. Go ahead and drag this one to wherever you want to. You can customize this to look however you want to by changing some properties. So one thing you might want to change is the background color. So that would be this option right here. You can select the box and then choose a new color for it. You can change the text by scrolling down to the text section. And then right here, you can change different things like the font. So you can select whichever font you want to. You can change the text that appears on the button. So I'm going to change it to close, but you can change it to something like end or whatever else you want to. And the other option that I would select is this one right here that says text scaled. And what that's going to do is just going to make sure the text is as large as possible so it looks good on the button. Okay, after that, we're going to be adding this part right up here, which is a text label. So click on the screen GY and then the plus sign. We're going to be adding a text label. Go ahead and drag this and stretch it to whatever size you want to. And then just like we did for the button, you can customize it by taking a look at the properties. So you can do different things like change the color. You can change the background transparency. So I made mine a little bit transparent. So you can choose something like maybe 0.75 and that'll make it a little bit see-through. Okay, so just go ahead and go through the properties and customize it to look the way you want to. The last thing we're gonna be adding inside of the screen GUI is a scrolling frame. So just like before, you're going to click on the plus sign and we're not gonna choose the regular frame. We're gonna search for scrolling frame, which is this one right here. Go ahead and drag that one to the position that you want and size it to whatever size you want. For my frame, what I did is I chose a darker background color, so maybe black. And then for the transparency, I changed it to 0 0.75. Okay, so that makes it a little bit see-through. We're going to be adding a couple things inside the scrolling frame. So the first thing that we're going to add is a UI grid layout. So you can add that to the scrolling frame by clicking on the plus sign and then selecting the grid layout. The only other thing that we're going to be adding inside of the scrolling frame is going to be this title right here. So to do that, you can just click on the plus sign and then click on text label. Just like the other ones, you can use the properties to customize the look of it. All I did for this one was change the background color to green, set the text equal to players, and then use text scaled. Okay, there's a couple properties we're going to be changing on the grid layout. So what we're going to do for cell size is we're going to change the X to 0 0.95 for the first part and 0 for the second part. And then for the Y section, you're going to be changing it to 0 0.03 and then zero for the second part. You can customize these numbers to make it whatever you want to to change the look of it. But basically this is gonna be how much of the X direction going left to right the buttons are gonna take up. 
and this part right here is going to be the spacing going up and down. So just as an example, let's add a couple more things into the frame, just so I can show you how this works. So let's add a couple more labels. And then if we take a look at this section right here, let's play around with the cell size a little bit. So instead of 0 0.95, if I do 0 0.5, you can see it only takes up half of the frame. If I do one for it, that would be 100% of the frame. I like to leave a little space though, so that's why I did 0 0.95 but you can make it a little bit closer to one by maybe choosing something like 0 0.97. So that'd be like 97% of the frame. And let's go ahead and play around with the Y part two just so you can see what it does. So let's do 0 0.1. So you can see that makes them pretty large. And let's try 0 0.01. So that's really tiny. So I found a good size was 0 0.03. And that looks pretty good to me but you're welcome to customize and play around with these numbers to make it look however you want to. Once you're done customizing it, you can go ahead and delete the extra text labels. Those were just used for the spacing, so you can see how it works. Okay, and after you have all those elements, make sure they're named the same as what I have on the screen here. So the screen GUI, you don't have to change the name of that. You don't have to change the name of the scrolling frame. You are gonna wanna change the name of the title. So that's the screen box right up here. Go ahead and change this button down here to open with a capital O. Change this one right here to close with a capital C. And this one up here, do spec label, capital S, and then capital L. Okay, after you have all that, we're going to be adding a local script to the scrolling frame. You can do that by just clicking on the plus sign and then clicking on local script. The first thing we're going to do on the script is add some variables. So the first one, we're going to say local frame. And that's going to be equal to script dot parent. After that, we're going to make a variable for the open button. So we'll say local open. And this is going to be equal to frame dot parent because we want to go up to the screen GUI. And then inside the screen GUI, it's called open. So make sure here for the variable name, it's a lowercase o. And then for the object name, it's a capital O because that matches what we have over here. Okay, next we'll do the same thing for the close button. So we'll say local close. It's going to be equal to frame dot parent dot close capital C. Okay, we'll make one for the spec label. So we'll say local spec label lowercase s and then uppercase L. And this is going to be equal to frame dot parent. And then here we're going to say dot spec label. This time we're using a capital S because that's what we put in the Explorer menu. Okay, finally, we're gonna make a variable for the player. So we'll say local player, and this is gonna be equal to game dot players dot local player. Okay, in the beginning, we're going to make the frame invisible. So we'll say frame dot visible is gonna be equal to false. We're also gonna make the close button invisible. So we'll say close dot visible is gonna be equal to false. And finally, we want to make the spec label invisible, and we'll do the same thing. We'll say spec label dot visible, and that's going to be equal to false. Okay, next we're going to make a function that's going to run whenever our open button is clicked. So whenever this button is clicked right here, we're going to run a set of code that we're going to put in a function. So we'll say local function. The name of this function can just be spec we're not going to put anything inside the parentheses. So outside the parentheses, we're just going to press enter. The first thing we're going to do whenever this button is clicked is we're going to make the frame visible. The way we're going to do that is we're going to say frame dot visible. It's going to be equal to not frame dot visible. So what this is going to do when we first load into the game, the frame is not going to be visible. So when we click on this button, it's going to make it appear. If the frame is on the screen, then clicking the button is going to make it disappear. So this is just doing the opposite of whatever the current visibility is. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is loop through all the players in the game and add a button for each player. So to do that, we're going to say for underscore comma. We're going to do a shorthand for player. We're going to say PLR. We're going to say in pairs. Inside here, we're going to get all the players by saying game dot players colon get children. What we're going to do for each player is create a button for them. But we don't want to create a button for ourselves. So the first thing we're going to say is if plr player dot name is not equal 
So it's going to be this symbol, which is normally in the top left of the keyboard. And then we'll put the equal sign. So if it's not equal to player, which is our local player, dot name, then we'll go ahead and create a button for them. So we'll say local name. It's going to be equal to instance dot new. Here we're going to be creating a new text button. We're going to say name dot parent. So this will be the location for it. And we're going to store this inside the frame. Next, we're going to set the text for the button. So we'll say name dot text. And this is going to be equal to player plr dot name. Then we're going to set the text scaled property equal to true. So we'll say name dot text scaled. So we'll set that equal to true. The next thing we're going to do is create a function so that whenever these buttons are clicked, it'll put us into spectate mode. So to do that, we're going to start with the button, which is name dot. The event we're looking for is a mouse button one click. We're going to connect this with a function. Next to function, we're going to put parentheses. We're going to move over one and then press enter. Inside this function, we're going to start by saying local person. So this is the person we're going to spectate. And we're going to get that person by taking a look at game.players. And then here we're going to say find first child. And the player that we're going to be looking for is going to be the button that gets clicked. So we can get that player by saying name.text. To spectate the player, what we're going to do is take the current camera and set it equal to the player's camera. So to do that, we're going to say game.workspace.currentCamera dot camera subject and we're going to set that equal to the person that we selected and their character. So this sets the local player's camera equal to the player we clicked on and their model. Okay after that we want to show the spectate label so we're going to say spec label dot visible and this is going to be equal to true. We're going to set the text for this we'll say spec label dot text and this is going to be equal to we're going to say spectating we're going to put a space and then we want to join this with the player's name so we're going to put dot dot and we can get the player's name from the button so we can say name dot text once we're in spectate mode we want to make the frame invisible so we'll say frame dot visible is going to be equal to false and the final thing we want to do is show the close button. So we'll say close dot visible. And we're going to set that equal to true. Okay, and the next thing we want to do for this is connect this with the event. So whenever our open button is clicked, we want to run this function. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say open dot mouse button one click. We're going to say colon connect. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put the name of our function, which is spec. All right, so let's go ahead and test out this chunk. There's gonna be something else we need to add to this function, but I wanna run it first so you know why we have to add it. Okay, so we can go and click on our button to open the frame. And we see everything looks good. So we have player one showing up for player two. If I close this and open it again, we see we have more of these labels showing up because what's happening is every time I click on this button, it's adding the players that it sees in the game. So what we wanna do every time we open this button here is clear out the buttons first before we add in the new ones. To clear out the old buttons, what we'll do is we'll say for underscore comma, and then we'll say button. We're going to say in pairs. Inside the parentheses, we're going to say frame colon get children. What we're going to do is we're going to check to see if whichever object we're on is a button. So we're going to say if button colon is a. Inside here, we're going to put text button. Then what we're going to do with that is we're going to say button, colon, and destroy. All right, so let's go ahead and try it out again and see if that fixes our issue. All right, so we'll go ahead and open up our frame. We can see it works okay the first time. And we can see after that, every time we open it, we don't get any duplicates. We just get the player that we're supposed to. All right, so while we're here, let's go ahead and test it out and see if it goes into spectate mode. All right, so we got our label showing up over here. It says spectating player one, and we have the close button down here. So it should be spectating player one. So if I move player one around the screen, we can see that for player two, they're able to see player one's movements. So everything so far looks good. 
And if I click on the close button, nothing happens right now because we haven't added that part of the script yet. All right, so back on the script, we need to add a section for whenever the close button gets clicked. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say close dot mouse button one click. We're gonna say colon connect. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna put function. And you can see I'm using two different ways of doing this. So in this case, I have the event separate from the function. But in this one, I have the event and the function together. You can do it whichever way you want to. It's really just a matter of preference. All right, so inside of this function, what I want to do is set the current camera back to the player. So I'm going to say game dot workspace dot current camera dot camera subject. And that's going to be equal to the local player dot their character. And then there's just a few things I want to turn invisible again. So that's going to be the spec label. So I'll say spec label dot visible. It's going to be equal to false. And then I also want to hide the close button. So I'm going to say close dot visible. And that's also going to be equal to false. All right, and that should be everything. So let's go ahead and test it all together and make sure everything looks good. This time, instead of two players, I'm going to load in four players. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out. So currently I am player two. So if I open up my list here, I see all the players except for player two, which is myself. So let's go ahead and spectate player one since he's over here on the screen. So if I spectate player one and move player one around the screen, we can see that for player two's screen, he is seeing player one's movement. Okay, and just like before, if I close it out, it goes back to player two's camera and I can move around freely. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.